All right, it's that magic 7.30 time. So we're gonna get started with our Zoom session. So tonight we are in the International Rescue and Relief Building and we're looking at the IRR program. So tonight we're gonna hear from Andrew, who's our program director, and also Rebecca and Benji, who do a lot of advising for our program. So if you have questions throughout the presentation, just go ahead and put those questions in the chat. And otherwise we'll have some open conversations at the end where you can also ask questions of Andrew or Rebecca and Benji. Also for coming tonight, whether you are a high school senior or you're ready to start college this fall, there is $500 uh, worth of scholarship that will apply to your account when you arrive here on campus. So stick with us throughout the program and we'll make sure that $500 gets awarded to you. And with that, Andrew, take it away. All right. Thank you, Missy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've only got a couple of you. Most of the crew appears to have joined the first session. Um, so we got uh, Sophie, I think it is, and one more. Um, yep, that's Rome. So we have <laughs> Sophia and Rome so far. Awesome. Well, pleasure to meet you too. With just two of you in this one, then we'll have a lot more ability to just answer questions directly to you guys. Um, but let's talk about their IR program. Um, and the big question I get is, what is IRR? It's one of our most popular uh, programs on campus. But we'll watch this video. You guys may have seen it floating around, but at least it'll give us a starting point um, to kind of figure out what is the IRR program. Um, and uh, yeah, the picture's worth a thousand words. So we'll check it out. <laughs> As the program director for the International Rescue and Relief Department, I often get asked, what do you do? Uh, what kind of training do you have? And what can I do with this degree if I end up taking it? IRR is a four-year bachelor's degree where we focus on humanitarian aid, emergency management, and emergency medicine. We train our young people with a high focus on experiential learning and give them the certifications and training they need to build out resumes. But also our main focus is how do we connect our young people and help them build a vision for uh, how they serve God and community to make the world a better place. We start our program uh, with organizational structure and leadership. Uh, we then move into emergency medicine where they get their EMT. Uh, our students also get a five-week intensive over the summer uh, after their freshman year. There's an epic five weeks spent out in the mountains of Colorado where we cover uh, survival, wilderness medicine, technical rope rescue, swift water rescue and flood management and search and rescue. Um, and then once they've completed these basics, they can actually join our disaster response team. Uh, in the past, we've gone to the tornadoes in Arkansas, uh, Hurricane Ian in Florida, Hurricane Ida, Ida in Louisiana, uh, Harvey in Texas. We've been to the Philippines and Haiti and Malawi um, and taking our students and using the skills they've learned um, during their time with us and actually help them to build their resumes and see what it's like to put these skills to use and serve people on their worst day. And as we build out their skill set, we prepare them for the capstone of the program where they actually get to spend a semester in Malawi, Africa. Uh, they get to work with uh, the United Nations at a refugee camp um, in Zaleka. They get to work with um, remote village clinics and hospitals such as Malamu Adventist Hospital. Um, they get to uh, spend a week in a village with cultural exchange, uh, living with the chief and his, and his people. Um, spending time with young people their age and learning history and politics, language, cooking, dancing, and what life for people their age in another country is like. And through that time, they use the skills they've learned for the first three and a half years of the program, get to apply it in a real world setting in what the World Bank has defined as the fourth poorest country in the world. We put a high emphasis on the pursuit of excellence and the leadership and servant and followership um, and wanting to turn out the best quality graduates that we can. These graduates are able to go out and serve people on their worst day, be able to serve communities affected by disaster, um, those who are affected by medical emergencies, those who are affected by protracted conflict, um, or communities that need additional help in their development journey. Um, our students and graduates are able to actually serve those communities and make the world a better place, drawing from their training here at the International Rescue Relief Program. So as Missy mentioned, we have a $500 scholarship waiting for you if you hang around for the whole presentation. Uh, but we here in IRR are also going to throw in some additional merchandise. Uh, we'd love you to represent our program. So we've got a hoodie um, a uh, in both the blue and the gray color. Uh, we have um, a buff, which if you've never heard of these, these are awesome multi-use scarf type things. 
And then we have an engraved Hydro Flask. Um, so there's only two of you in the chat, so you're pretty much uh, guaranteed to win something on this one. Smart coming to this one because there were a lot more people on the last one. Um, so uh, stick around until the end and you'll be entered for the drawing. But what, what makes IRR special? So our story, we started in 2004, an emergency room physician was like, hey, how do we um, train um, the next generation of young people to be ready to respond to the increasing number of disasters that are happening in the world and actually make the world better and actually use that opportunity to reach people on their worst day. So the idea was to create a program that would create missionary on steroids um, and basically train people for emergency medicine, disaster management, medical rescue training, um, and be able to be there for people on their worst day and bring hope and, and solutions and order to chaos um, when things are going wrong. <clears throat> so, Within the first year of the program, this is this is all within the first year, uh, we start actually with two classes, uh, Principles of Emergency Management and the Foundations of IRR. So between those two classes, our students start and jump right into um, understanding how to bring that order to chaos. So the Principles of Emergency Management, you get the FEMA or the Federal Emergency Management Agency Incident Command System training classes. So that's the ICS 100, 200, 700, 800, 201, and 42, as well as a bunch of tabletops, um, like exercises, um, being able to design your own exercise. We bring in people from the local emergency operations center. Um, this fall, we actually get to coordinate with um, the local emergency operations center and the airport authority to actually be players in a big um, full-scale exercise on two collided aircraft at the airport. So our students get to be players for that. Um, and there's going to be Lincoln Fire and Rescue, the hospital system, um, Lincoln Police Department, the Sheriff's Department, the airport authority, TSA, animal control, um, the, the EOC, um, both county and, and uh, city, the um, uh, National Guard, uh, both Air Force and Army. So there's a bunch of different players and we get to be part of that training um, this fall. Um, then after the fresh, or then also in freshman, you get your EMT uh, license. And then um, the five weeks following that are in Colorado where you get survival, wilderness medicine, technical rope rescue, swift water rescue, search and rescue, and all the rescue certs come through uh, Rescue 3 International, which is the largest uh, training organization for rescue in the world, over 1.5 million first responders trained. And then Wilderness Medicine is through the Wilderness Medicine Training Center, uh, based out of Mazama, Washington, is one of the top in the, in the industry. So all those certs, and in addition to that, we offer um, further on in the program, you get your ham radio, we offer like drone classes, flood rescue boat operators, specialist rescue, ice rescue, um, this fall, we're offering con space as an optional class. So a lot of different options on ways that you can build your resume and even become an instructor for several of these things in our program. So some cool videos on like what students learn at summer program. So we can watch these and just kind of see some of those skills. My name is Jackie. I'm an international risk and relief student and I have an emphasis in public safety paramedics. So what we're doing right now is contact swimming and we are rescuing a patient out of the water. So it's all about timing. So as a patient is coming to you, you're yelling at them to come and swim towards you. At the right time, you jump to them, you hold on to their vest. We have to swim the patient out and have them assist you swimming. And you just have to fight against the current and try to get to where the water is calmer. It's important to rescue people out of the water because in these cases, People often don't know how to save themselves. So come join RR so you too can learn to rescue in any situation. So Jackie is an awesome lady. She went back to Chicago after she graduated and instead of doing paramedics, she actually went on and did uh, nursing instead. And so she wants to get into flight medicine. Uh, flight medicine. Um, she's super cool. And uh, yeah, so she basically did a, a double bachelor's degree. Hi, my name is Lydia Gentry and I am an international rescue and relief major. My goal for the future is to work with victims of human trafficking. So right now we are rappelling down the cliffside because we have a patient at the bottom that we need to get to. It's important to be able to reach them because every technical rope rescue when it involves a patient is just a medical issue with an access problem. So our goal is to try to reach them as safely as we can. Right now I am attached to two separate lines. This is my main line that I have my repelling device on and it's locked off at the moment so I can be talking to you. 
Um, and then this is my backup line in case anything were to happen to this line, I would still be safe. So come join IRR so you too can learn to serve in any situation. So Lydia is also an awesome woman and she just finished her master's in social work. With IRR, she double majored IRR social work, um, then went on and got her MSW and is now working uh, with survivors of human trafficking in Kansas City. And she's got some really awesome stories of, of what, how she's been able to help and make the world a better place. My name is Maya. Um, and then the semester abroad. So we have real world experience is kind of the capstone of the program. So once you finish, um, your freshman year, you do the summer program, join the disaster response team. Uh, the next two years are full of just building on that. So um, learning about social dimensions of disaster, cultural perspectives and development, advanced care for EMS providers where you get like IV administration and superbiotic airways, uh, disaster or uh, development and project implementation, uh, global health. Um, and as we build onto the foundation of the freshman year, uh, that actually is building towards our semester abroad and the capstone of the program. And that's actually a semester in Africa where we actually start with a week in cultural immersion because when you're you know going to a new country, especially the, the fourth poorest country in the world, it's, it's a very different living environment than what we have here. So learning about culture, history, language, politics, what another way of life is like um, is super important. So this is a short video on what the first week in Malawi is like. Hey, Hannah, where are we right now? We are in Chingadita. Oh, so what are you drinking? Uh, we are here for a cultural immersion. Mm, oh, awesome. People here are so kind. We were lined up to get things out of the bus, and they were like, oh, we got this. And we're like, oh, OK. <laughs> so they're really nice to pick up stuff for us. Mm -hmm. Masuela Bunji. That is uh, good afternoon in Chichewa. My name is Aaron Tam. I'm a junior IRR uh, major. I'm Gracie Leonor. I'm a senior. I'm Jacob Smith. I'm also a senior. We are in the Malawian village of Chingalire this afternoon. We just had a, uh, a lunch, beautiful lunch, with uh, local food of encima, some rice, and some beans, which is kind of like a cornmeal-based um, blend, almost like grits in the south without the grit. And then we had very good. green um, green bean greens, so the leaves of the green beans, and we had rice and kidney beans. So it was a very southern, if you're from the south, big southern lunch. How is it, Gracie? So good. Hannah, how is it? What about you, Augustine? Mm, how's the pineapple? Watermelon. <laughs> um, it's fantastic. Later today, we have lessons on Chichewa from the uh, person in charge of Chingalire, Chief, uh, Chief Ben. Yeah, it's awesome, Chief ben. awesome guy. And we're gonna learn more about Chichewa, how to speak it, and learn. Hopefully, some of the basics of Chichewa, so that as we're interacting while we're in Malawi over the next eight weeks, we can do so in their language. Especially important as well with our one of our main missions here with our Malawi expedition, um, providing medical care. A big part of providing that medical care for the locals is understanding their way of life and especially understanding their culture and their language, most importantly. So that's something that I think all of us are looking forward to. So earlier today, we arrived, and the chief gave us a 
cool tour of the village. It's not a very large village, but this village was kind of built around engaging foreigners into learning the Malawi culture and language. So the predominantly agricultural village. So over the next week, we'll be working with some of the local villagers and tending to the fields, preparing food, going about the daily chores and tasks, while also immersing ourselves with several of the local historians on the history of Malawi. and its peoples and what we can expect as we travel around Malawi, um, working in some of the more remote villages, um, providing medical care with local actors and doctors. Got it. Do it. <laughs> So big question we could ask, okay, so a lot of this sounds really fun, uh, but what can you actually do with a degree? Um, and I think uh, we're, we're gonna talk about that here in a second. And like uh, one of the projects we have this summer is actually mapping where all of our graduates are and building an interactive map we wanna put on our website because uh, our graduates do amazing things. Um, not only does this program give you some amazing hard skills, but it actually uh, gives you a lot of soft skills in like leadership, followership, excellence, work ethic, um and just like opens up so many doors and possibilities as to where you can go so this is a project we're working on um we're trying to work through all the permissions and privacy concerns um before we share people's like uh, locations but here's ones that we actually do have permission to share um so here's our interactive map and so it's kind of fun because we can actually zoom in and actually see what a bunch of our graduates are doing um so here we have Jacob Smith. He just graduated last year. He was a paramedic when he came to us already, he finished out his bachelor's, and now he's actually helping start a brand new ambulance company here just outside of Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, we have um, over here in Colorado, we have um, Aaron Kent. He graduated, he's one of the early grads. Um, he actually is the director and owner of Southwest Rescue and also the regional director for Rescue 3 International, which is the world's largest um, uh, training organization. Uh, for technical rescue. Um, we have people like uh, Garrett Brass. He's working for the U.S. Marshals. Um, we have uh, Aaron Tan. He's not on the map yet. He just got a fellowship with uh, diplomatic security for the federal government. Um, we have a very high acceptance rate to medical schools. Uh, Jeff here is, went to dental school. His wife is also a grad. She was, she's a paramedic out in California. Um, uh, last year, 100% of our graduates got into their graduate school of choice, whether it was medical school, PA school, dental school, uh, public health, um, anything else, uh, PT school. Uh, we also have international graduates. So again, working on getting permissions from them, but we have one in Ukraine. Uh, we have two in Chad. This one is featured in Sierra Leone. Uh, James Fernando, he's a missionary doctor with his wife, who's also a PA. Um, he came through a program. She went directly through PA school here, for, here at Union. Um, so they've been over there for quite a while. Uh, we have Corey Sample over in um, uh, Papua New Guinea. We have uh, people in the Philippines. Um, so grads, both domestic and abroad, um, really doing some cool stuff. And IRR like is a great starting point. And what we hear over and over again is that was what I talked about in my interview and made me stand out. So great opportunity um, for for moving on to next steps. So we have three main tracks. We have our pre-professional, so the pre-med, pre-dent, pre-PA, IR nursing, kind of those, those medical tracks, pre-PT. Uh, pre uh, then we have our global community development track. This is our newest one, and we also just started a master's in public health here at Union. And you can actually pair the two with a three plus two option, where um, your first three years of IRR, um, you get to go to Malawi and everything. And then your uh, fourth year is actually your first year of your master's in public health. Then you graduate with your bachelor's and then your second year MPH, and then you graduate with your master's. Um, so it cuts out a full year of time and tuition. And we're offering something similar with our uh, master's in leadership as well. Um, and then we have our public safety track, which is our paramedic fire, law enforcement, military. Um, and then we've had grads do other things like double major IRR, uh, social work, psychology, nursing, um, international relations. Um, we've had people go on to law school, uh, and do all kinds of uh, great things with, with the program. So uh, Stephanie Flugrad, she's working for the, she was working for the Red Cross in Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh, now she's uh, working for FEMA in Maine. Um, then we have, this is me. So my background, I graduated from, from IRR. And then I went on and got my master's in international development administration. I went and worked in Ukraine. 
um, during the initial Russian invasion um, and worked with like Ukrainian IDPs. There were 3.2 million at the time when I went. Um, then I moved to Iraq and worked with Syrian refugees and IDPs, uh, Iraqi IDPs. Um, came back to the States, worked for the Medical Reserve Corps for the Red Cross, and then uh, came back to teach for IRR. And now I'm working on my DRPH or my doctorate in public health with a concentration in emergency preparedness. Um, so again, huge ways or uh, avenues there. Uh, my wife also came through the program. That's how I met her. She's awesome. Uh, she also got her master's in international development administration, worked in Ukraine and Iraq with me, worked for the Red Cross. Um, and then now she's uh, in law school and double concentrating in uh, space law and cyber or uh, national security. Um, and then um, alternate resolution dis or alternate resolution dispute resolution. Um, so she wants to work on like international treaty arbitration and like working with refugees and IDPs internationally, like um, trying to improve our, our asylum seeking process. Um, Tobias Watson is working for uh, training um, for the private sector, um, kind of with uh, FEMA as well for hospitals and healthcare administration. April Jensen, uh, she went to DO school, uh, did a surgical residency, and now she's also got her MPH. Um, and she comes and volunteers with us. She might be in uh, Malawi with us this year. Um, General Surgeon, she does a lot of international uh, support work as well. Um, James Fernando, we talked about him, uh, a doctor in Sierra Leone. Uh, Brittany Nunez, she has an awesome job where she's a paramedic and does the training um, for the fire and AMR uh, departments in um, uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, and then she gets to actually tell in real time, like how the updates protocols affect uh, patient outcomes, uh, which is really cool. Um, Ryan Hawkinson, he went and did fire and rescue. He went with Howard County, uh, which is one of the top departments in the country. And he got in, there were 1,300 applicants for 30 positions and he got in uh, primarily because of his IRR degree. Um, was second in his class in academy. Um, but he's recently moved to a different fire department in Virginia to help them grow their, their program. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do with the degree. And like, we could just go on and on about what grads are doing to make the world better. Um, but really what we focus on is real world experience, hands-on experiential learning, um, and using our professors that have real world experience to actually help students grow. Um, we actually have uh, just did a study on our students and their learning outcomes and the national average for neurodivergent learning st uh, styles, which is like ADHD, ADD, dyslexia, dysgraphia, whatever other learning dis, uh, style. Um, and nationally, the when, when students go to college, there's only about 8% um, that go to college. In our program, we have 16%, so we're double the national average, with almost 50% of our students scoring within two points of, of neurodivergent learning styles. Um, and we find there's no difference between GPA for those students. So very similar uh, success rates um, because of the way we teach our classes. So how to be successful, be ready for adventure, um, be ready to challenge yourself and push yourself outside your comfort zone. That's what we're all about, um, being outside and, uh, and in that growth area. Um, we wanna give you opportunities to learn outside the classroom and actually apply the skills and the theory you learn. Um, and you get to do that while you're earning a bachelor's degree. So we're gonna move into questions. We're gonna have a raffle and we'd love it if you guys would follow us on social media. Um, and just kind of learn more about us. We have a ton of YouTube videos. Our, our Instagram and Facebook are pretty active. So check out our accounts, learn more about us. Uh, but yeah, let's move into some questions. I'll be able to answer some of the program ones. We have Rebecca and Benji who can answer more of the advising questions. We have uh, Carla, I think, coming up with enrollment questions. So yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys and um, yeah, what you guys might wanna learn or any concerns you might have. Hi, it's nice to meet you. I'm Benji. We missed the first part because we were with the previous group, but what what are your names again? Uh, I'm Sophia Kreitz. Okay. Hi. And gonna... I'm Rome. Rome, awesome. So do you guys, I, uh, I kind of advise for first-time freshmen, if you do a confirmation deposit, you'll get an email from me. If you're coming in as a transfer student and have more than 24 credits, you'll be uh, being advised by Rebecca. And we kind of work together. So, yeah. so yeah. Um, I'm with Student Success, and we provide all kinds of resources. I, I don't need to get into all those now, but, you know, we, we help with tutoring or 
It's a great place to study, but a big connecting point for, for freshmen. So <laughs> it's nice to meet you both. Um, I love working with the IRR program. Uh, one thing I was saying in the last meeting is it's, it's a pretty great way to the, the classes that come through or that I've seen, like they get, they're really tight on campus and on campus kind of group and cohort to see the students get to know each other. And that just strengthens over summer, summer program. And um, mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. You just get to see really lifetime friendships be, being made or being formed. Yeah. So. Hello, my name is Rebecca Lovelace. I'm the assistant program director of IRR. Um, and as Benji said, I uh, advise all of our uh, sophomore, junior and senior students. So after you're with Brent, Benji your freshman year, then you come to me. Um, and I see you through the rest of the program. Um, but yeah, I'm a graduate of the program as well. Um, so I know very well what you're going through and how to help and classes and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, any questions that you guys have? I had a quick question. So Sophia is going into her senior year. So if she's thinking about IRR, what kind of classes should she focus on if she's thinking about that? I don't know if that's your question or not, Sophia, but that would made me think that when I knew you were headed into your senior year. I'll take it. Yeah, sweet. Um, do you know what track you're interested in? Like medical, non-medical or something? Um, I haven't decided yet. I'm thinking maybe medical. I've thought possibly physical therapy but i don't know i, I want to do something that'll help me help other people like outside of the u.s so that's an option very cool yeah so medical um you'll want to take a and p if you can um maybe taking some college level classes and maybe like um a trigonometry or college algebra, you know, kind of getting ahead on some of those um, general education courses is pretty helpful, I've seen, because our medical tracks are very rigorous. So you're full <laughs> on credits every single semester. So anything you can do to get a little bit ahead is awesome. Um, but yeah, focusing on your sciences in, in high school and stuff and getting those upper level sciences so that you have a a bit of a head start in that area yeah and math if you have a chance to do a type of college algebra or some yeah. of those things because pretty, pretty quick and hard yeah. but if you have any running start or kind of dual credit type of programs even knocking out like an english and stuff like that can open up your schedule yes. for for a wiggle room as mm -hmm. as you come to college yeah definitely yeah, we see more and more students trying to do that to get a few college classes before they come. Um, it's not, you know. You don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to, but um, it just opens up a couple of things, like just a little bit more flexibility. Thank you. Any other questions? That's okay, if not. <laughs> Rome, do you live in Lincoln? I live kind of in the Omaha area. I live closer to the Pillion. Okay, okay but you, you come to church here sometimes, right? Or... Yeah, and did, sure. And did you go on, like, the um, mission trip last year with, with Mick and them? Yes, it was so much fun. And I'm going on the Dominican Republic one that's oh, coming I up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I wish my son was going on this one. He went to the so. Yeah. Okay. Really enjoyed those mission trips. Yeah. Well, and if, if we happen to get off this. Really oh, sorry. Oh. I'm talking. I You're good. I just was saying how I don't, I have questions right now just because. Partially, I haven't really decided what major to go into, and uh, now I'm just kind of trying to broaden my go. Yes. Yeah. You know what you're kind of interested in doing as a career, like kind of what you want to do in life? 
Um, I have a lot of different ideas. I've thought about definitely like sciences, um, like working with animals such as a veterinarian or a vet tech, probably more medical. Uh, and I really like helping people, so um, doing like that. But I also have considered like completely doing something different for business, like art, um, graphic design, marketing and stuff. So I really have a lot of ideas. And so narrowing it down has been a big chore. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Those are some very diverse uh, interests. Um, we've had some students come through like Joseph Lee. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's did uh, graphic design with IRR associates um, and he's got into like REMS teams, like rapid emergency medical uh, teams, like for fire uh, seasonal fire uh, rescue and like uh, wildland firefighting. Um, but he's also like a graphic design. He owns his like own company and he does like, photography, videography, um, stuff like that. Um, he also was interested in going in down the public information officer route. So like doing, like working in emergency management, but using his graphic design um, skill set um, to be able to support in that kind of avenue. Um, we also have had people do uh, pre-vet. We've had a couple of like kind of go that track with us and, you know, just a fun way to do like a, a science degree kind of makes you stand out a bit more. Um, we've had people, we actually have a couple right now that are double majoring IR business. Um, so it doesn't have to be like the main track that you want to do, but if it makes, if it sounds like it's kind of a fun program for you, then you can actually like get where you want to go and maybe learn a few things along the way that, you know, are more interesting than just like your traditional business degree or biology degree or graphic design degree. Um, learn some of those like personal, like self-rescue skills, medical skills that would be helpful. Um, especially like, like international work, humanitarian work, um, stuff like that too. So, yeah. yeah. You can also minor in IRR and get some of uh, some of our classes while you major in something else. Um, so there's lots of options as far as like taking the fun stuff or, you know, focusing completely on IRR. But yeah, there's lots of different ways to get multiple different areas. I definitely have a lot of ideas because I've also thought about. So, I just need to make a decision. <laughs> well, also the I think the average number of times somebody changes their major in college is seven. So, <laughs> if you're less than seven, then you're better than the national average. So, <laughs> yeah, and I think it's like three to four times in your freshman year. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> So start with something that's kind of like your staple, something that's kind of interesting to you. And from there, you can kind of tailor what your final degree is going to look like. But, yeah. Okay, should we put the names in the pot for the drawing? Yeah, let's do it. All two names, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck, you guys. I hope you get something. <laughs> Sophia, um, where, where are you from, or where are you zooming from? Um, I'm in Idaho, so <laughs> quite a bit of ways. Yeah, where where at in Idaho? Oh, I can't hear you. We lost your sound. I lost you. Oh. I think she was at Gem State. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Nice. nice. Awesome. Oh, nice. A couple of Rebecca and I's best friends in college were from Gem State. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I have a couple names here. I'm going to throw them in the pot, actually. Okay. Rebecca's <laughs> going to draw. I'm going to mix them up. All right. What is it? We're, it's let's for let's the, do the sweatshirt. For, for the sweatshirt. Okay. Yeah, the sweatshirt. I'm mixing them with my hand. Okay. Spin it around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Sweatshirt. Yeah, have Sophia with the, with the with sweatshirt. The sweatshirt. Nice. Nice. Okay, should I spin around and we choose an... Um, it might be unnecessary, but we... <laughs> deductive reasoning, Rome. For the hydro flask. All right. Hydro flask for Rome. Awesome. Sweet. Rome, you're close enough. You can pop by any time. Um, 
shoot an email if you want to, you know, ex- yeah. explore more stuff. I, I love it that the future's wide open for both of you. Um, mm-hmm. I'll come yeah. pop by too. Sophia's address. Sophia, can you type your address into the chat for us so we can have that? Yeah, for both of you, like, if you ever have any questions and you're like, you know, I want to work internationally. I want to do emergency medicine. And even if you're not interested in IRR, like mostly what Rebecca and I, and I think everybody at Union, we're passionate about connecting people with opportunities and we're passionate about education. So even if you decide IRR is not for me, but you still want advice on college, like even if you don't come to Union, I think most of us will answer your questions because we believe in education and we believe in helping you find your passion and like how you can use that passion to make the world better. So if you have any questions, whether it's about IRR or not, or union or not, like shoot us emails, send us text messages, whatever. Like, like we, we really care about what we do. Like that's why we're here. So if you have any questions, reach out. Like we're not scary people or anything. Like we're just a few years ahead of you on the, on the journey of life. So yeah. All right. Well, you guys are awesome. You had good questions. So thanks for joining us tonight. Anything else before we log off and send you on your way? No? Okay. Well, we sure appreciate it. Thanks for coming, you guys.